Hi folks, and welcome back. This is Creating Change with Jillian Walsh, myself. I am a registered dietitian and a registered psychotherapist qualifying, and I'm an eating disorder specialist that works with primarily children and youth who have been affected by an eating disorder. Of course, I also work with their families. So today we are here to talk about hunger and fullness cues. One of the main complaints I hear from clients and their families is that the child affected by the eating disorder will say that they do not feel hungry and therefore they don't need to eat. This is one of the biggest mistakes when it comes to early eating disorder recovery. So when we talk about hunger and fullness cues, they are something that are nice to have. They're not a need to have. What I mean by that is after a period of time when we told our body or the eating disorder has told our body that, hey, you're not hungry, no, you don't need that right now, no, you shouldn't eat that, the body actually stops sending out those hunger and fullness cues. Basically it thinks they're not listening to these cues anyway. I'm already in a state of starvation. I'm not gonna waste my energy on putting out these hunger and fullness cues just to have them ignored. Does that sound about right? So the tough thing is, is that it takes some time to restore these regular hunger and fullness cues. So in the meantime, we unfortunately have to actually eat through that feeling of fullness, or we have to eat even though we don't feel hungry. What we do and what we recommend for those instances in early eating disorder recovery is something called mechanical eating. So remember that mechanical eating, you'll see that come up in a future episode. That's going to be something really important when you're looking at restoring hunger and fullness cues. But let's circle back to that complaint of, I don't feel hungry, so I'm not going to eat. We can't listen to that voice because that voice is gonna keep us stuck and that's gonna keep us stuck in the eating disorder. So when our child is saying, I'm not hungry, I feel full, or as somebody living with an eating disorder, you're thinking those things, we actually need to change that thought pattern and eat anyway. So maybe you think, hey, I don't feel hungry, but I know that my body is not gonna put out hungerfulness cues right now, so I need to eat anyway. That can be something helpful to say to yourself. It can also be helpful for a parent to say that to a child. The main thing is to, is to make sure that we don't stop eating or not eat because of the absence of hunger and fullness cues. What we do instead is we rely on mechanical eating, again, we'll talk about that in another episode, to make sure that we're providing our body what it needs, when it needs it, so that our body can regain trust again. And eventually, those hunger and fullness cues will be restored. And then you can go back to relying on hunger and fullness cues and return to normalized eating. That sounds lovely, right? But in the meantime, we do need to eat regardless if we don't feel hungry. All right, have a look for the next couple of episodes that we'll be talking about mechanical eating. That's where you wanna go next. We'll talk all about what it means to eat mechanically why we do it, and how we eat through those absent hunger and fullness cues. Thanks for being here. Talk soon.